Damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 360. Happy New Year, 2024. Unbelievable, what a time we had with the ball dropping. <laughs> it's uh, it's our year in review show for 2023, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. Happy New Year, Crab fans. And uh, and as uh, as we have been talking about the last couple of weeks, this is our polls show. So this is uh, this is Ethan's favorite show of the year where we go down the list of uh, we ran a bunch of t- polls on our Twitter at TWL underscore podcast. And we uh, we just ran a bunch of polls, let you guys pick the best wrestlers and teams and shows and uh, and a few other categories that we actually added for the first time this year. So we have 10 categories altogether. Ooh. And uh, a nice even number. And uh, let's say we get started with one that Ethan will not have any strong opinions about, and that is the best female wrestler of 2023. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> and kicking it off, we have, uh, we have EO Sky winning that category. In the finals, she defeated Mayu Iwatani, Bianca Belair, and Athena. Uh, some others who were nominated along the way were Trinity, Tiffany Stratton, Azumi, Tony Storm, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Kyrie Sane, Roxanne Perez, Chris Statlander, Utami Hayashita, and Diana Parazzo. So EO Sky is the listener choice for a uh, female in ring performer of the year. Uh, what say you? Um, EO had a good year. Um, Becky Lynch had a great year. I things, was, yeah. I things, I, things Becky Lynch did with the NXT Championship. Um, yeah, Becky Lynch was uh, at least in North America was the women's wrestler of the year. Yeah, I, 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 I thought about that too. I thought about the cage match with with Trish was really strong. Um. You had, as you mentioned, the NXT reign. It felt like she did what has been purported has always been the thing when you put an NXT belt on a main roster person. What they always say they're doing, which is, oh, they'll get more eyeballs on the show and they'll have good matches with NXT talent. And when they leave, uh, all those talents will be elevated. And most of the time, that's not really how it feels. It's just kind of a main roster guy or girl holds the belt for a while. Right not naming any names, but uh, it felt like she really elevated a few people, especially Tiffany Stratton uh, along the way. And yeah, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with Becky. EO also, I feel like she had uh, a good back half of the year. Cause she, when she wins the belt and she's like a full singles wrestler for the rest of the year, I think you can make the claim, but Becky, you could probably make a, a better claim was was more active as a singles wrestler the whole year and probably has more more highlights to it. But I don't have a t- I don't have a big problem with EO at least as the as you said the the US the the North American uh, uh, champion here. Moving on to category number two, we have best male wrestler, and this is probably the biggest upset that I think we have here. But uh, the winner was uh, none other than Orange Cassidy, who defeated Roman Reigns, Will Ospreay, and Brian Danielson in the finals. Uh, others that were nominated were Gunther, MJF, Vikingo, Kenny Omega, Ilya Dragunov, Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes, Carmelo Hayes, Hangman Page, uh, Tetsuya Naito, John Moxley, and Rey Mysterio. Orange Cassidy, I think you can go with just sheer quantity of good television matches this year. He's probably number one. Like he and Gunther probably both have a, have a claim to that just based on consistency and consistent, like three star and above performances. Uh, It's probably one of those guys, but uh, I was a little surprised to see orange uh, outlast you know, some of the maybe more flashier choices like a, like a Brian Danielson this year. If I voted in things like uh, wrestler of the year, uh, I would, 
uh, vote for Orange Cassidy. So, yeah, I like I said, I, I don't think there's a I. It's something we talked about on our show throughout the year. He's a he definitely worked a lot of great matches this year. I think you can argue that someone like Danielson or MJF or or Roman or Cody or or somebody like that had higher highs. Um, but maybe nobody just had the consistency of work that uh, that Orange had this year. So uh, good choice there. Um, moving on to category number three, we have the judge. We have the best tag team or faction uh, award. And the winner of this one is the Judgment Day, defeating in the finals the Bloodline, the Acclaimed, and Bullet Club Gold. Uh, others that were nominated include Aussie Open, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, uh, Astronauts from Big Japan, uh, Imperium, Motor City Machine Guns, The Creeds, uh, and uh, I look. It's, sometimes it's hard. You just got to fill up spots and polls. But I did put uh, uh, Bishaman on there as well. So uh, yeah, Judgment Day were all over television every week, and they wrestled in the main event of every Raw, seemingly in all of 2023. Um, so. I mean that's fine, right? That's they're they they were solid. They they certainly had some uh, in ring highs this year. I guess they were, they were all over every show, and mm-hmm. there were months where they were all over Raw and all over SmackDown on the same week. It was like mm-hmm. they, before they kind of found whatever the groove they're in now for them. They were um um they're like we desperately need to recreate this bloodline storyline on raw (laughs) and so we're going to uh have a lot of judgment day drama where finn might turn on priest or priest might turn on finn or i i don't know like i i have to sit and watch three hours raw every monday night live so maybe uh, i'm more annoyed by it than most people (laughs) who catch it here and there or watch the Hulu version the next day or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but uh, sure. <laughs> if you like the, if you like the judgment day better than any other group, fine. I don't, I don't know that they were the best, but the uh, bullet club gold was probably the funniest. Yes. I mean, juice Robinson might be my personal, <laughs> My personal MVP of uh, of that promotion in in 2024, but um, as far as also they also probably um, one benefited a lot from that from Collision. They were one of the few groups or one of the few groups of guys who benefited from that show being on the air. And also, um, I felt like they uh, they kind of made made chicken salad of chicken uh, shite as far as just. They didn't really feel like they were going anywhere. And so they made themselves something. So, yeah, I, I appreciate Bullet Club Gold in that way. Um, like I said, I know a lot of people were really high on uh, on astronauts and Big Japan this year. Uh, Imperium as a group, they wrestled, you know, they, they're solid in the ring. Aussie Open as well. Um, Sammy and KO, I felt bad because they had a great, great main event at WrestleMania night one. And then they didn't have any teams for them for, and then, uh, and then there were some injuries and stuff as well. I think they had a really strong, like couple of months, but it was hard for them to maybe make the case for a whole year. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't really feel like there was a standout winner for this category. So yeah, I feel like the judgment day just win it, just won it by force of uh, being the team, maybe most remembered in 2023 because they're all over every show, as you said. By not being Goto and Yoshiashi. Yes, that is a big that is a big press. I do enjoy the creeds a lot. Um, as someone who only sporadically watches NXT, but has enjoyed them since coming to the main roster because it feels like someone might die anytime they're on television. And that's a little bit of excitement I'm not used to on the World Wrestling Federation uh television. But uh, moving on there to category number four, which is best on uh, interviews slash promos. Uh, maybe this is a maybe this is a little bit of an upset. Christian Cage defeated Cody Rhodes, John Moxley, and L.A. Knight in the finals. There, uh, others that were nominated were Roman Reigns, Becky Lynch, Samoa Joe, uh, Bailey, Becky Lynch, Adam Copeland, 
Again, these are not my personal opinion. I just, people seem to like his stuff. I don't, but I put him in the polls anyway, because I'm a fair and honest man. Uh, MJF, Brian Danielson, The Miz, Don Callis, Paul Heyman. But uh, Christian Cage came out on top. Um, I, I, as much as I enjoy his shtick, I think he's a, he's a good example of a guy being really entertaining, but also being able to get like heat at the same time. Like there's a fine line there, but I think he's really good at that. But it's LA night, right? This guy talked himself from the mid card to into a match with Roman Rage, basically. Yeah, he talked himself from practically unemployed <laughs> to uh well some of that has to do with Vince McMahon being in and out of power <laughs> multiple True. times throughout the year. But uh yeah that Vince McMahon threw a stage to coup <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh looked like he was he was done again. And yeah, the guy talked himself from being a manager on the verge of being fired to uh to main eventing shows yes has to be yeah and uh, yeah i don't think you can there's and like he i think the criticism on him is that he's a austin or rock ripoff but to me one crowd don't seem to care and if you're getting the crowd to react like that who cares and also everybody you know rick flair ripped off gorgeous george and buddy rogers and everybody else so everybody rips everybody off so i don't i don't necessarily think that's like as despite i hate to disagree with the show's favorite wrestler kevin nash who tried to make waves this year by coming out as staunchly anti la night right as the point that his popularity was like <laughs> at its zenith but no i think it i think it's la night in a runaway um, like I said, as much as I personally enjoy Christian's work a lot, I, I don't I don't really feel like you can you can deny that it's LA Knight for the reasons we just stated, which is he talked himself from, as you said, maybe almost getting fired into being like a a legit main event top guy. So uh it's it's LA Knight. Yeah, I, I will I will disagree with the the listener there. So We've also heard every argument against LA Knight for many years, and it's mm-hmm. most of the arguments people used against uh, Daniel Bryan in WWE, where it's like, oh, pe- people just like chanting. It's not, he's not over, the chant is over. It's like, well, right. so what? <laughs> so what? Correct. People are, people are buying tickets to these shows in uh, record numbers. They're setting records in every town they go to. Um, he's he's uh he's not the stereotypical s- superstar okay so what uh he's 41 years old he's not going to be the top guy for the next 10 years okay well he can be a top guy for the next four years <laughs> like right. like what i i got no problem with it whatever yes i think there's it's very easy to be the guy pointing out why why something can't work <laughs> because right. Nine times out of ten, you're right. He won't be John Cena, right? right? Or he won't be the next top guy for the next 10 years. So you can be right pretty easily with that. But yeah, in, in the moment, he's he he is the 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 guy who probably elevated himself most in WWE by far in, in 2023. So uh, hats yep. off to him. Uh moving on to category five. This is one of our new categories that I I, I kind of t- took the uh, you were uh, you were asked to participate in the Wrestle Purists end of year award, so I kind of just cribbed some of their categories. Sure. Uh, but uh, I added this year this one we didn't do a semifinal poll, so this just had four choices. But uh, category five, the best wrestling promotion of 2023, had four four choices. We had WWE, uh, All Japan, CMLL, and AEW. Uh, the World Wrestling Federation, big win here for them. Uh, CMLL coming in second. Um, I think when you talk about best promotion or best company, there's two ways to really measure that. If you're trying to measure it in like an objective way and not just like, what do you like the best, which is where the show is well received critically. And is there like clear sign that what they are doing is working for business. And in that case, it's the WWE in a complete runaway because the shows were well received and they're doing 
record business in every every city they go to for like a solid year now. Yeah, you can't. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I can't add anything to that. Indeed. Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like CMLL, like they overtook AAA in attendance this year, which is really impressive. Um, and they seem to be putting on shows that are well received as well. So you can certainly give them like a nod, but if yeah, I I don't I I can't argue with anyone giving the the nod to uh to be here. Um, and moving on to I guess this is kind of a similar category now that I think about it. But I guess this is more specifically a what do you like the best category? And this was for Booker of the Year. And uh, we had four choices here. We had uh, Panico, who books CMLL, to your best friend, Tony Khan, Shawn Michaels, and Paul Levesque. Paul Levesque, once again, winning this one. Um, Again, uh, the overall WWE product, the weekly television product, is not for me. It's, but, like, again, I don't, it's hard to argue that, it's giving people exactly what they want right now. So, and they have elevated stars and they have, they brought people back. They, uh, he has booked in a way that he is, I felt like earned back (laughs) years of mistrust from their audience in that they're not going to get screwed over if they emotionally invest in a world wrestling federation storyline. So that might be an achievement of the Paul Revesque uh, regime. I mean, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn won a WrestleMania main event match this year. Mm-hmm. Um, CM Punk came back to the WWE this year. Yep. Uh, strictly for fan service. Strictly because they knew their fans would like it. Mm-hmm. Like, when's the last time the company, that company ever did anything because their fans would like it? <laughs> Right. Rather, rather than swimming upstream and trying to g- tell the fans what they want, <laughs> right? And as we were just talking about, it took them a little while, but they did give you know they give give LA Knight that main event against Roman at the the last Saudi show. So, like they they listened to a guy who got over organically, who at the start of the year wasn't wasn't even on WrestleMania and and then a few months later he's in the ring trading promos with with the biggest star in the company. So like yeah, they this was the year that they they earned back I think a lot of that credit and I think it's also the year that Tony Khan as a booker lost a lot of that that uh, credibility with the fans as far as believing that you're going to get what you think you're going to get and you're going to, you're going to be rewarded for being a fan of the company. Um, So yeah, I think Paul Levesque more than earned that this year. And moving on here to category number seven, we have the most improved performer of 2023. Um, This should should be a runaway. Four choices here. We have uh, Dominic Mysterio. No. Tiffany Stratton. Yes. Yoda Suji. No. And Julia Hart. No. So I <laughs> I hate to break it to you. Dominic Mysterio won this uh won this category uh quite handily, but people don't watch NXT. <laughs> I I defy anyone to watch NXT and keep their eyes off Tiffany Stratton. She's uh as a as I said, as a casual NXT viewer, she certainly caught my eye in in a completely <laughs> respectful way uh, in uh, in 2023. But no, I think she's she's awesome. And to her credit, and we t- I think we talked about this on the show at the time. She was also helped by being in there with people like Becky Lynch, who she was learning on the job. Like she's still young and green, but as someone who already maybe had like a character. Uh, but needed more polish. She she began to get that polish this year. Like as a as a worker, she she improved a lot this year as well. So yeah, I think I think Tiffany Stratton's a great choice too. Um, Dominic certainly improved as a character. I don't. I think he is what he is as a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, like I don't. I think he's fine. You know, he's, yeah. People like seeing him get beat up. 
So he he has a role on that show for sure. Yeah, for sure. And he certainly improved maybe as a as a speaker in uh, in 2023. And Julia Hart did. She's the most over part of that act now. So I don't I don't hate I don't hate that that choice either. But yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree that Tiffany probably deserves more credit than she got. Two months ago, I would have said uh, Julia Hart uh, was a would be a fine choice. Also, mm-hmm. Julia got got herself over. She started doing that awesome moonsault. Both Julia and Tiffany have great moonsaults. Tiffany's is the best moonsault in the business. So <laughs> it's not well. Tiffany or Yo Sky had the best moonsault in the business. But mm-hmm. uh, regardless, anyway, Julia Hart then uh, lost a TBS title match and took two weeks off to get married. And since she's come back, she has not been as good. That's fair. She won the TBS championship since she came back, and maybe she's uh, she's now taking Sky Blue in on, on uh, to honor the House of Black. Mm-hmm. Um, so character wise, maybe she's uh, advanced a little bit there. But uh, I think her in ring work was better, say over the summer. That's fair. Um, yeah, like I said, I I don't disagree that Tiffany probably deserves this. It's just for the total year. We talked about that earlier with like EO versus Becky of. Somebody that was maybe good for a section of the year versus somebody who was more consistently and more consistently grew throughout the year. Hey, the Becky Lynch Trish Shadis uh, feud was really bad. Yes. Uh, the creative was really bad, and it went forever and ever and ever. But the matches were awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I yeah I think there's there's something to be said for that as well. But uh, yeah, Dominic Mysterio, uh, according to the listener, is the most improved of twenty twenty three. Listeners wrong. <laughs> but moving on to category number eight here, we have the most underutilized slash underrated wrestler of 2023. Um, have four choices here. Chad Gable, uh, Daniel Garcia, uh, Gabe Kidd, and Speedball Mike Bailey. Uh, Daniel Garcia won this. Uh, yeah, I think if you look at the first nine months or so of his of his time in AEW before they turned his his lack of direction and momentum into a storyline. You can certainly make the case that he was wasted by being the guy in leather pants dancing in Jericho's uh, very long in the tooth faction for the first nine months or so of the year. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree that he was he probably could have been utilized better. Um. For me, it's hard to say Danny Garcia was underrated when he I saw him wrestle practically every week. Um, underrated implies like underused or something. Gable got himself a regular spot this year. Like he's still not. I mean, he got himself an Intercontinental title match where they made sure to beat him in front of his wife and, and daughter mm-hmm. and I made sure to show his crying children on TV. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't I don't I wouldn't strongly disagree with Garcia, but I think Gable is probably a better choice than Garcia for that still. I don't know. Yeah, I mean like G- Gable is really good at the at the goofball WWF comedy, like as part of that that group with Maxine Dupree, who maybe also could have gotten votes for most improved this year as far as like a character at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but not, I wouldn't say as a wrestler, I saw that match. She had with her, yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, like chat, Chad, as far as a guy who should probably be like, you know, at a, at a certain level, I don't really see a guy like that ever being world champion in, in WWE, but a guy who probably could have been, you know, uh, could he have been at the level that Dolph Ziggler was for the last 12 years? Yeah. Yeah, he probably should have been like. <laughs> um. So, yeah, you. I think you can pretty much always make the case that that Gable in the same way that people would always make the case for uh, Claudio or Cesaro being underutilized because he was just kind of a tag guy in WWE for a long time. Sure. Um. All right. That will move us on to our next to last category. This is the best uh, pay-per-view or big show of 2023. Paul White won it. Um, that's a, that's a good joke. Uh, no, the, the best pay per view of 2023 or premium live event. If you're a fucking freak, um, is, uh, AEW revolution 
beat out the Royal Rumble, uh, Wrestle Dream, and WrestleMania Night 2. Uh, AW Revolution, I had to look this up, was the show with uh, with uh, Brian Danielson, MJF, Iron Man match, as well as the Hangman, uh, John Moxley, Texas Death match. That was very good on that show. Uh, other, other nominees were WrestleMania Night 1, Backlash, uh, Wrestle Kingdom 17, show you were at in person, the uh, Muda Retirement Show, Dominion, Money in the Bank, the G1 Finals, All Out and All In. Um, God, I think I think that All Out show was was really really good, and also it probably came at a point where like everyone's morale and opinion of AEW was very low coming out of the Tony Khan firing Punk thing um revolution was a good show too i don't know i didn't have a strong when i was making that category i didn't really have a strong like this was the best show of the year i liked wrestlemania night two a lot um with the the charlotte Rhea match which i think is a little bit overrated but people really loved um and then the the wonderful brock omas match the greatest moment of my life when shane mcmahon tore his quad on on uh, national television and Cody Rhodes losing to Roman Reigns. That was funny. Um, yeah, like that's that was a good show too. I don't know. There wasn't one that stood out to me, but uh, the fans did pick AEW Revolution as the number one show. Sure, why not? I the problem with all of these is that um, most of them were nine. Problem with all of these is that most of them. Anyway, the problem <laughs> the problem with this category is that many of the choices are from more than nine months ago and i this i watch these shows and forget them the next day <laughs> yeah so. kind, of, kind of the nature of the wrestling is content era isn't it just back on the hamster wheel the next day is how this usually goes uh so anyway unless something unless there's like an absolute blow away match i remember the match I probably remember the most this year, and I'm, I hope I'm not stepping on something on a future category, uh, is that Hangman, um, the Hangman Swerve match mm-hmm. or the Omega Osprey Wrestle Kingdom match. Um, those are the matches I remember most this year. Mm-hmm. So those are probably the shows that I would vote for, which would be what? Like uh, Been Full, Full Gear, Gear and yeah. Wrestle Kingdom. Right. So I... I don't know. I mean, yeah, that uh, that Iron Man match Danielson had was great. I, yeah. I I I got no problem with that. Yeah, like I said, there's a I think there's a lot of shows you can you can make an argument for because it had that was a great match or that was a great match, which also just speaks to the overall in ring level is higher, so it's harder I think to pick a show that stands out. Um, but yeah, that was uh, Revolution's a fine choice with that with that main event. I guess it's it's hard to pick one, as you said in the in the content era. It's hard to uh, to remember a full show from start to finish. Um, but that will move us to our final category, which is as you uh, alluded to, best match of the year for 2023. And uh, in the finals, uh, the three way from WrestleMania: Gunther versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus defeated uh, that Swerve Hangman Texas Deathmatch, Charlotte versus Rhea Ripley from WrestleMania, and the Brian Danielson versus Ricky Starks Strat Match in the finals. Other ones that were nominated were uh, Kevin Owens and Sammy versus the Usos from WrestleMania, Roman versus Cody, uh, Omega versus Osprey 1 and 2, uh, Danielson versus MJF in the Iron Man match, Trish and Becky in the Steel Cage, uh, Bianca Belair and Eo Sky from the Puerto Rico show, uh, Danielson versus Zack Saber Jr. Uh, and Omega versus Takeshita and the Okada Naito G1 Finals. Um, I really liked that three way, but as we just kind of touched on, there is pretty much no match that will sit with me when I think about 2023 more than that Swerve and Hangman match. Yeah, same. Uh, who could remember? Who could forget? Uh, Hangman drinking uh, Swerve's blood. Yeah, and uh, and uh, who could uh, forget 
Omega and Osprey doing absolutely everything you could possibly imagine to one another uh, in this <laughs> in a semi main event um, yeah. on the biggest show of the year for New Japan, and then having uh, poor Okada and Jay White have to go out there and try to try to have a re- regular wrestling match with no gimmicks right after it. Mm-hmm. This did become the year where uh, maybe Okada couldn't follow <laughs> anything anymore because he also. Yeah. They also he and Tanahashi also couldn't follow uh, Kyrie and Mercedes on that Long Beach show, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I said I I liked that Gunther match and Gunther as an overall MVP candidate. I think also has a has a claim, but um, yeah, I thought that's that I I liked that match. I would say probably the the, the Texas Death match or um, again that Starks and Danielson Danielson like like six weeks out of breaking his arm coming back at the 11th hour after punk got fired to save that show and, and wrestle Ricky Starks and having that crazy strap match is certainly very memorable as well. Um, But yeah, I think, and as we talked about the, the Becky and Trish not letting a lot of bad creative ruin their blow off match was really impressive (laughs) like they they killed it in that cage match as well so a lot of good choices uh again it's i I think the texas death match is my pick but hard to argue with any of them i guess well i think that uh, that wraps up our main categories there um i guess if i was trying to think of like what are the what are the what's the lasting memory of 2023 i think it's what we already touched on i think it was the shift where fans got a little more disgruntled with the aew product and got a and wwe fans on the other hand felt more rewarded and were taken better care of arguably by by the wwe as far as again the the fan service element so it's, this is the year where like it was all it was never really a real war like wwe was never in danger of losing you know losing a time slot to end to an aew show but like this is the year that wwe kind of ran up the score right yeah i have uh these charts here from WrestleNomics in front of me mm-hmm. uh with uh the year over year uh, television data mm-hmm. it's like uh Pretty consistently, each quarter, AEW is down just overall. Mm-hmm. Nine, Dynamite is down 9% in quarter one year over year, 7% in quarter two year over year, 11% in quarter three, 10% in quarter four. In 18 to 49, 23% in quarter one, 14% in quarter two, 10% in quarter three, 8% in quarter four. The rampage numbers... 18 to 49, quarter one, down 40% year over year, 23% in quarter two, 18% quarter three, 17% quarter four. They're down in every single quarter, whether whichever metric you prefer, total audience or 18 to 49. Mm-hmm. WWE, uh, quarter three and quarter four this year, uh, they lost over audience in terms of on Raw. They, their audience got younger. The raw audience was up 13%, 19%, 2%, 12% quarter over quarter, 18 to 49. NXT up 5%, 23%, 39%, 47%, 18 to 49 year over year. Like WWE's audience got younger. AEW's audience got smaller. Yeah. So that's like that. That to me is what I'll probably think of most of all with with 2023 was like it was it was a from on every aspect, I think, from the like when you just like kind of put your finger to the wind and you you feel the temperature of the general audiences and what they're getting from the company and what they're happy with and not happy with. Uh, I think you could feel it going WWE's way. And then as you just laid out in more succinct, like cold, hard data, WWE is, is just firing on all cylinders. Like they just, 
they ran up the score. So that's that that I think is maybe the most uh defining uh defining uh wrestling story of of 2023. And I believe that will begin to wrap us up for this week. Thank you everybody for listening. As mentioned, we'll be taking next week off as part of our our little belated holiday break thanks to the the world's end and uh, and everything at the end of uh, last year. Uh, happy New Year again to everybody. And uh, I don't do we don't do this very often, but I'm just going to go ahead and beg uh, uh, if you listen to us on a podcast app, give us five stars. And uh, if it lets you leave us a review, leave us a review. And uh, you can also subscribe to the show on YouTube. It's also TWL underscore podcast. You can find us. Uh, you can like, uh, like and share the videos there. So if you want to help pod out, that's a good free way to do it is to just like give us five stars and write a review on uh, whatever app you listen to us on. So we appreciate people that do that. We saw the, uh, the little Spotify rap thing. We had some some growth in, uh, in followers and listens this year. So we do appreciate that. But uh, gosh, I'm just, uh, I'm so excited. Uh, I can't believe it's 2024 already. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I guess this, is, uh, this wraps us up and we'll be back in a couple of weeks. So until then, I'm Liam. I'm Ethan. And we'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Happy New Year. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. At some point, I was uh, going to chime in, and uh, my microphone was muted, and uh, it turns out it was probably for the best. Oh, all right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like well you know blah 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 like, oh i guess liam didn't hear me and then i looked at the microphone and was, oh yeah you're muted yeah. <laughs> like well it's probably for the best it's a, it's a, if it's a prescient point you can you can say it now and i can try to splice nah. it in nah i'm sure it was nothing <laughs> <laughs>